Um, I think we should start by you trying to solve a mystery that is going on at this end. So I've been caning your new EP today. The the first song, uh, like the the title track, is there a swear word? Is there a swear word in it? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know what you're alluding to. Um. Well, it's so. At one point, it sounds like you're using. I mean, I, it's, I'm not being. I'm not being prudish. I'm not being okay. judgmental, right? But yeah. it's. There's a bit where it sounds a little bit like you've dropped an f bomb. No, let me think. I'm, let me. I'm trying to think if I can and can guess where it is. So. Um, and then it sounds like there's an F. That bit. Yeah. Oh no, it's wordy. I think I think you maybe confounded it, being confused by that because there's so many words going on and so much rhythm. There's probably some pretty harsh Fs and S's sounds in there, but it's not. It's not. There's no swearing. <laughs> so my worry about bringing it up is if anyone, uh, you know, a fair few people listen to the podcast, and my worry now is if anyone who works in radio hears this interview and goes, oh, it sounds, even though you haven't said it, my worry is that they might think it sounds like you've said it. I wonder if that's a thing in music. If if something sounds like a swear word, what do they do about it? But my guess is, if it's not a swear word, it's, it's totally fine because it's, it's it's definitely not. Let's right. So let's categorically, for the record, say it's just my ears. It isn't coming out of your mouth. Hand on heart, no swearing in Dreamer. Maybe no. I'm not. I'm not going to try and corrupt you by saying you should drop it into a live performance sometime. But <laughs> uh, it's it's awesome that EP though. Thank you. Um, no, it's it's properly good. I went back and kind of like delved into like the rest of your catalog and forgive me if this is sounds a bit uh well you know i mean this in the best possible way but it does feel like this ep it feels like a bit of a rebirth or something it feels a little bit like it feels very different to what you've done before yeah i think all my songs have a different energy to them and it's and it's kind of intentional because I feel like as people, we go through an array of experiences and a, we have an array of inspiration and, you know, we're living in a time where we have Spotify and we can listen to all different types of genres. And I don't want the music to sound like different genres and it, it's not different genres, but to me, the word pop means so many things. I, I'm almost scared of the word pop. It's a bit like the word God. It means so many things. <laughs> it can be different to anybody. But um to me, pop can encompass a take on all the genres. It can, it can be, a, it's as long as it's like a fresh, intuitive, and authentic take on it. Um, and, and there's a thread. The, the key is if you're going to experiment and, and go to different places, that there, there has to be a thread and consistency of sound. And you know, I, I think my voice in in many parts is that thread. Um, and I think the tonalities of the production is that thread too, even if it might sound like, oh, that one has a bit of more synth and that one sounds a bit more uh, soulful and that one sounds a bit more gritty. I think the tonality uh, that we place upon the music and how the textures and tones um, are interpreted, uh, there's there's a similarity between each song. And yeah, we, we go into different worlds with each song, um, but I think we also... I want it to feel like a journey, you know. I, 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 you look, you take an old song of mine like "Pale" or, or "Hourglass." That's a new one on the on the EP, and it's it's so reflective and it's so kind of intimate and internal that song. Um, but then you also take a song like "Back at Wrong" or, or or "Love Like That," and it's so celebratory and and extroverted and fun. And that's me, like, that's everybody. We're all everything. One, one day we wake up and we feel a bit low and a bit of a bad mood or, or, you know, we go through a chapter in our lives where maybe we're going through a breakup or we've lost someone close to us in some way. I mean, and, and sometimes we go through times when 
it's a it's a celebrate a celebratory evening it's a great it, it's a great night it's a great summer like we go through all of, all of it as a person I, I've always wanted to reflect that in the music yeah I guess what I'm trying to say a bit is that you know your first record is 2020 right yeah but you were in you, you kind of like ditched your toe into music quite a fair bit before that and I guess oh, yeah. the I guess what I'm trying to say is it, it does feel like from what I've heard in your discography that maybe the CP, it feels a little bit like, would it be fair to say you've kind of found a bit more of your own voice with this record? I think for sure. Every song you write, you're growing. Um, and I definitely feel like, you know, I've had a long journey in music. The, the songs that have been released are really the tip of the iceberg. I spent many years writing, developing my sound, and in, in, ten, in some places intentionally and in some places not unintentionally not releasing music. Um, and I think it's all, all the songs that have come out are a culmination of all those years of growing. And now the, 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 the new thing for me when I started to release music was that it was a... I, I started to understand what it means to finish a song because I was always writing songs, writing demos. When I, when I started to release them, it was like, wow, the craft of songwriting, the production. Um, it's like going through things with a fine tooth comb and it can be really arduous. Like I like things to be instinctive and fun. And the, the finishing of a record is like late nights, like gritty details. Um, and, and, but in doing that, my ear definitely evolved and my ability to write songs and my ability to be intuitive, I, I, I feel, uh, developed and it was honed. You, you started out being managed by Simon Fuller, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I guess the other thing I think is it feels like, and this might just be my own sort of prejudice of the music industry showing, but that I imagine that, I imagine that, that world that maybe you stepped into in that setup is quite different from where you you have arrived at now. Yeah, I think when I first started working with Simon, he definitely recognised that I was more of an individual. Like a lot of the bands, he produces them or produce and someone will write the songs for them. And he definitely saw in me that I wanted to be in the studio and kind of have the vision. And he definitely gave me uh, the freedom to do that because he trusted my like where I wanted to go artistically but I also think inherently you know you're working with a, a bigger business and there are things where maybe you feel like you're trying to people please or or, or, or deliver what they what they want to see yeah. and I think once I started to get a little bit more independence um I felt more freedom and I felt a bit more trust in myself I, I started to learn how to make my own decisions and feel like I, I had my own voice, um, which was a really um, kind of empowering and freeing feeling because we're, we're living in a time where there are no rules in the music industry. You know, you can be a Billie Eilish and put your song on SoundCloud and be wake up the next day and it's all changed. Or, or you can be working with a label and having a big, like uh, a lot of teams behind you. Like there's, there's no rules, but for me, definitely in the, in releasing the music i found my autonomy um and i found my my strength and trust in myself and i think i stopped referring to others to tell me this is how i you should do it because i have the experience and i started to go well what what do i think when when do you think that start when, when do you think that emerged in you when i started to release the music right 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 I mean, I, I feel like that has existed for artists sort of as long as, I mean, I was I was talking to um, um, one of the members of the Zombies, the band from the sixties, mm, yeah. and and, and you know he was saying the it's on the audio podcast, and he was saying a similar thing that you know as far back as the sixties they were kind of being trying to almost like trying to be shaped into something that they didn't want to be, um, but I guess it's kind of I don't know it's it's one of those things I think a little bit like when young people enter the music industry that you almost kind of feel like so grateful that you're being given a shot that, and also, you know, when you're surrounded by people who have experience and have had some success, it, 
it's sort of hard to i mean there's that thing with robin the musician robin like she mm -hmm. always talks about it like her first record that she sort of mm -hmm. was disowned because you know she's sort of be people are writing songs for her and styling her and she has she hasn't really kind of found the confidence to be who she really wants to be mm -hmm. well it's interesting because for me confidence comes from experience like i i for me it's in order for me to feel confident it has to, i kind of feel like i have to earn it it doesn't just come like naturally um, so it was through making the mistakes or having the experiences of of writing with multiple people and, and finding what doesn't feel right. Like I have a lot of songs that like I'm like, mm, those aren't great, <laughs> but they're all stepping stones and kind of push you toward finding something that feels feels like you. How many times when you do press do people bring your mum up? 99% of the time and to be honest I'm totally fine with it because it's part of my story I'm very proud of my mom I think she's done I mean, she's done amazing things and she's been a huge inspiration but the the difference for me that um I always appreciate it when people have uh, a, a certain sensitivity and how they bring it up because sometimes it can be brought up the first question and you know it, it's the tone in which it's brought up and and the kind of giving credit to me and recognizing me as an individual first and then asking more consciously about her because I'm happy to talk to her. Uh, sorry, I'm very happy to talk about her. It's it's part of my story and it's shaped me in many ways. Um, but I also hope that people can see me as an individual and, and recognize the work that, you know, I've put into crafting these songs. I, I've always had an awareness that like, because of my mom being who she is, there might be a little bit of of judgment or speculation upon the music. And I think that's one of the reasons why I didn't put music out for a long time, because I really wanted the music to be able to speak for me so that people can hear it and go, oh, this is good. Like this, I want to listen to this and not kind of let the story, the context lead lead by me in, in, in how people discover me. On a scale of one to ten, how well did I bring it up? Ten. Oh, thanks. Mate. You know why? Because you gave me the freedom to to talk about it and and leave it. Well, I, I guess the, I guess the thing I was thinking is that because your mum was such a trailblazer, um, I I can understand why. I can, I mean, you can't, you know, you can't enter into a pop career when your mum is Annie Lennox and not want to talk about Annie Lennox because she's like one of the best pop stars. The country you know this country has ever produced you know and but but i guess because she was sort of such a trailblazer right i can see i can't work out whether that would almost be empowering in that well i can do whatever i want N not not because your mum's annie lennox but because it feels like her career has been her doing whatever she wants i can't work out whether that's empowering or that's intimidating i've never felt like because of my mum being who she is i can do whatever i want yeah, I didn't mean I, that. I didn't really yeah. mean that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was more like, as in, like looking at your mum and going, she, you know, she looked different to all the pop stars of her era. Like the music they made was, I think the music the, Rith the Rithics made w wasn't in any way like homogenous. It was very unique, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. like, and I, I wonder whether almost seeing someone that like didn't totally play the game whether that would be inspiring yeah it's interesting because when people ask about how my mom inspired me I always feel like it was an indirect inspiration I don't look at the work she's produced and go oh this inspires me and I'm gonna see how I can interpret what she's done and put my own spin on it. it it's never like been like that how she has influenced me is an indirect way it's like an osmo an osmosis of being exposed to her working on albums or her preparing for a show it's it's witnessing the energy that she puts into the to the music and the project she works on and I think the the main influence on me is is seeing how much she how much purpose it gives her how much she commits herself wholeheartedly to it how deeply she digs to pull out the best in herself and how she'll go the, the next hundred miles to make something that pushes a boundary. And to me, I'm so willing to, to 
work so late in the studio to push to push to push to write the hundred songs to do the 10,000 hours I'm like let's do it because I I know I see behind I've seen behind the curtain for many years and that um for me is I think maybe where I've been I get the most um I'm, I'm the most kind of grateful for witnessing that where do you stand on uh well I guess the phrase which is is very much in currency right now is nepo baby yeah how do you feel about that yeah i mean i obviously i've thought a lot about it because it's such a term in the zeitgeist and i think i think people have an issue with it because they think there's kind of like a a bypassing of of hard work and i by no means don't i recognize that i have had certain privileges that other artists wouldn't have had but I think there's a way you can get maybe a, a foot or a toe in the door, but there's no way you can walk through this, the door of the music's not up to scratch. Yeah. So for me, I, I look at the last 10 years of me making music and I've worked my, I don't know if I can swear, but I've worked my... It's, it's encouraged. Oh. You swear on, <laughs> you, you have a secret swear word on Dreamy. You can say you can say anything yeah. you want. I've worked my ass off, let's put it that way. And I've I've had so many ups and downs. And there's been times when I'm like, is this ever gonna happen for me? Like if people kind of knew the 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 process and, and the path that I've been on, I, I don't think they'd think, oh, she's just snapped her fingers and had all the doors flew open for her. It hasn't been like that. Um and you know, I can understand how there's certain frustrations with the Nepo baby thing, but I also think there's nepo bit there's modeling as well where it's kind of like you know you're there as a face and you're representing a brand but i think with music i really don't think you can get away with it if the music doesn't like ha deserve its place to be heard and the music doesn't have a certain quality like i heard bono's son in Haler's band the other day and i was like this is incredible like i'm just like happy to be listening to the song and i don't think about him being bono's son i just like this music is such good songwriting and I want to listen to it more you know yeah I mean it's I'm not I'm not dissing anyone but um you know you know John Lennon's son Julian Lennon I'm not a big fan of his music you know and I think it's that thing of you ultimately the music has to be good I I, mm. I guess the th you know regardless of who your parents are I guess that um my take on it is is that I think it you know <laughs> my parents were never particularly into what I ended up doing for a living, mm -hmm. you know? And I actually just think that I sort of get the idea that people think that this is almost like, you know, having a, um, having a famous parent or having a parent within the industry that you enter would be a leg up. But there's also part of me that ha having not had parents like cheering me on in what I wanted to do, I guess I just I like that people have that in a sense. Do you know Do you know what I mean? There's a you like that people have what? Sorry, that they have that from a parent. You know, yeah. like I I like the fact that there's a, um um someone I interviewed on the podcast on the audio podcast recently called Eve's Wilder, and mm -hmm. her parents are both like very prominent uh, British music journalists, and like one of their the the her dad um he was. The last time I went to see her play, her dad was like, he was like the biggest fan in the room, right? He was just like, you know, singing along and all this sort of stuff. There was there was maybe a bit, there was maybe a little bit of, oh, dad. But like, I looked at it and I was like, that's amazing. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know. I just think that it ultimately it comes from a place of, music's never been a meritocracy. Do you know what I mean? So actually, I think mm -hmm. the way that you look at it is, it's just amazing seeing enthusiastic parents in the corner of uh, of their children you know does, you, does your mum like yeah. your music yeah i mean firstly like for us to be able to share a dialogue about creativity and and kind of seeing the world through inspired eyes that's really cool like that's really a special thing that we get to share and i think in the beginning when i first said like oh i it was almost like a coming out of the closet to be honest when i said i want to do i want to do music mm. i was scared <laughs> because 
you know, there's big boots to fill. It's not even like I felt like there was big boots to fill, but I felt like the bar was set high. And um Yeah, really fucking high. Yeah, really high. Um and I'm just a teenager who's, you know, got a notebook full of embarrassing teenage songs. But the, I loved it. So I was like, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm going to try. And in, initially, I think the mother's protection was like, she was she was a bit like, are you sure this is a really hard industry? Yeah. Like, she, she, you know, she wants to protect me. And that kind of made me go like, okay, I... I want to carve my own path. I want to do this independently. I don't really want to, I felt like I needed to earn my stripes as an individual a little bit. And then once I kind of spent some years doing that and got to a place where I felt like, okay, I know myself, I feel good in the music and I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I feel good, good in my, in my identity as an artist, then her and I could, could dig into it together more. And I, I felt a bit more open to, to go there with her. And, um, She's so supportive and she's such, she's like more, so excited about about it. Like where she'll like dance around and sing along. Like she's now like, it, it gives her so much happiness. And it's like, it's it's so nice to see that. I like it. I love it. Um, I'm a huge fan of your dad's movie, Galoot. Um, how, how does he feel about your music? Yeah, I mean, my dad's also a really creative person. Like, my dad, the way he sees the world as well is is so fascinating to me. Like his his way of he took he did a lot of photography when he was younger and made films and I just love his wisdom on, on humanity. So I think for him to see um me and, and also my sister Tali, who's a painter, having our thing, the thing that lights us up, yeah. I think that makes him happy. Amazing. So what's the plan now then? Is it um have you do you have a plan of when you would release a full length, a full length record? So now I just got back from um London where I was promoting the the Dreamer EP a couple of days ago. I think today might be the day I'm just over the jet lag, I hope. Um you, and you live, you live in LA, right? I I yeah, I do, yeah. Okay. Um and now I'm like so itching to to write more music. Like I've got a notebook full of like 70% song, written songs, and I want to finish them, get them down. You know, it's interesting. I'm in a place as well where I don't want to be like, I'm going to write an album now, because I think in the past I've had a little bit too much focus on the result rather than the process. Right. I think that's a really key point as, it, as well as there's any other musicians or artists listening, like li it, digging into the process of the music making as opposed to like, I'm doing this to do this, to get this result. It, it start it really burns you out and I I was burnt out um by trying by focusing too heavily on like I've got to get this new EP out get not the EP but the single get the get this finished and I've got to like get it back uh, I was stressing so now I'm like so excited to write be present with the music and let the songs lead me I hope there's an album there but I'm not thinking I'm doing this for the album I'm thinking I'm doing this to make the best song that I can make. Would it be fair to say that you are a bit of a hippie? <laughs> there's, been a few, there's been a few things you've said, and I've been like, "Yeah, I can, I can hear kind of like Tibetan drums, and um, <laughs> there's a bit of sort of namast going on." You know. <laughs> I mean, I think I've definitely like found solace in reading a lot of books about self improvement, life, the universe manifestation or, or you know buddhism and presence um i think you know when you feel you can feel a bit lost as a person for me i i do tend to turn to nature going for walks or you know i, I journal a lot um i think i self-reflect a lot my dad lives in ibiza and that's very hippie in the best way ever and yeah. i feel very very at home there very freeing and and warm and there's a community but you know i also live in la and like to wear lip liner and <laughs> right, <laughs> you right. know go and have a margarita i wouldn't say i'm a hippie but I def by any means but i definitely draw from a lot of the like hippie movement philosophies for sure yeah does uh, manifestation work 
I mean, that, that's such a definitive, uh, you are, you're asking for a definitive answer for something that could be so unknown. Right, but for right, me, right. I, I think the key is to be clear about what you want in your life. Dreamer, I mean, my EP and single is called Dreamer. And it's because I was always, I'm always looking out to find like, what can I do to improve my, my life, to improve myself? Um, and I think having clarity around that is, is really key. I have found that there is an uncanniness to the things that I've put out there to try to manifest and they have come back. But I just think there's something to having five minutes in the morning going, even you could just even call it getting clarity on the things you want. You can say, you know, I, I want to, you can do something and it can be big or small. It can be like, oh, I want to live in a house with a, beautiful garden and you know I, I, I don't know that's a big or or you know get to number one on the radio or you can just be like you know I'd like to get better at cooking or I'd like to take more walks in the day like you can you can dream in a, in big and small ways I think that's quite a nice place to leave this uh Lola. <laughs> thank you so much for speaking to me and um sorry if I've got you banned from any radio stations um, but like I say, I, <laughs> I've had such a lovely time listening to your your EP today, and I do hope that it leads to a record at some point. Well, thank you so much for having me on, and thank you for enjoying the EP. Pleasure. All right, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye, -bye. Have a good Bye. evening. Bye.